Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for another art video. I'm Joanna Hill with J Hill Fine Art, and today I'm gonna to be painting some lovely tulips with my favorite type of paint, Griffin Alkid Oil Paint. As a quick note, I am not sponsored by Windsor & Newton, I just love their paint. So what are Alkid Oils? Alkid Oils are a fast drying oil paint that has a working time of about four to eight hours, and they will dry in about 18 to 24 hours. Traditional oils have a lot longer drying time, which can differ between colors and from my experience can take up to several days or weeks for a layer to dry. These Griffin Alkids from Windsor & Newton have a consistent dry time across all their colors. Of course, that can change depending on mediums added or the thickness of your application. I find the color vibrancy with these paints may not be as vibrant as traditional oils, but it's so close that I don't mind the slight differences. I feel like these paints are the perfect blend of an acrylic paint and a traditional oil paint as they are so forgiving and much easier to use and get the results that I want. A lot of my students have found that this line of paint is easier to learn from as beginners because they aren't fighting the quick dry time of acrylics or the slow dry time of traditional oils. Oil paints can be very intimidating and a lot of people hear the word oil paint and they immediately want to shy away from trying to use them because traditional oils can be very messy and they have strong fumes which can lead to headaches and other health issues over time. With Alkid oils, there are hardly any fumes. I myself paint in a studio which is a small 10 by 10 room and I have no problems with headaches or health issues. And as far as the mess, Yes, they can be messy, but no more than any other paint can. So how do you use these paints? I first start off my paintings with a line drawing that's been placed underneath a layer of clear gesso. I layer it this way because I don't want to risk smudging my lines and losing the design. The gesso locks it in and I'm free to paint my tonal layer without losing my lines. For this painting, I toned the canvas with a thin coat of raw umber to give a warm feeling to the painting. My first layers, which is my color blocking layer, I thin out the paint with Gamsol, which is an odorless mineral spirit. The Gamsol thins the paint and gives me a lot of fluid movement to quickly get a thin layer down on the canvas. I'll follow this layer with thicker applications by using the paint straight from the tube. Even though this is a quick drying paint, you still have to follow the fat over lean rule, or in other words, painting thin to thick. Mixing the paint with Gamsol makes it thin or lean. Adding oil to the paint adds fat. The reason for doing this is so when it dries, the bottom layers dry first and the top layers dry last. When oil paint dries, there is an oxidation process that happens and gases need to escape from the bottom up. If the top layer dries faster than the previous layers, it can crack the paint layer over time. In short, my first layers I mix with mineral spirits, followed by using the paint straight from the tube, and finishing with glazes using the paint with added oil. I use walnut alkyd oil for my glaze layers as it will dry slower than the paint out of the tube will, but will still dry fast so that I can add more glazes the next day.
When I first started painting many years ago, I used acrylic paint, but I had a lot of trouble with getting smooth blends and I found myself being very frustrated with it as the paint would dry so fast. I eventually switched to traditional oil as that gave me much longer working time and also more vibrant colors than the acrylic paint. After using traditional oils for a while, I found that I couldn't continue my painting in a short enough amount of time because it took too long to dry. So after doing some research, I included mediums into my oils that would speed up the dry time, but I found that I couldn't quite get a dry time that best suited the way I liked to paint. I prefer to work with a lot of layers in my painting and having to wait days or weeks for the paint to dry wasn't realistic for me. I couldn't get work done in a reasonable amount of time. When I discovered the Winsor Newton Alkyd oils, it was a total game changer for me. This paint lets me work for several hours and when I come back the next day or two, everything is completely dry and ready for the next layer. As I'm continuing painting these tulips, you can see that I'm doing a lot of the highlights with white paint. I like to use this method underneath my glaze layers because that allows me to get a higher chroma glaze. The Griffin paint line has a limited amount of colors available and it can be hard to get the correct color at the right chroma. I was painting these tulips from still life that my student and I set up for one of our lessons. For a lot of beginning artists, painting items in glass or reflective objects can be very intimidating. The easiest way to approach this is to find large areas of color and then just place a paint stroke down. When you have the most obvious shapes of color down, work within those sections with additional colors and layering those colors in thin glazes so that each layer works together, like stacking stained glass on top of each other. If you're wondering what kind of palette I'm working on, it's just a large glass palette with a gray background that I bought off Amazon. I prop it up on my easel and attach my canvas using some blue tack. I really love the gray background because it allows me to see the colors a little bit better than if it was on a white or a black palette. As I'm painting, you can see that I'm using an assortment of brushes. I really like using synthetic hog hair brushes as they are firm enough to move the oil paint and yet soft enough that I'm not leaving scratchy looking brush strokes. For later layers, when I'm adding details, I will switch to a softer brush like a Taclon bristle brush. For the tulip petals, I used a brush called a rake brush, which has long bristles with gaps in between. It allows me to get separation and the brush strokes to resemble thin lines of texture. And for blending, to get those nice seamless blends, I use what's called a mop brush, which is just a fluffy brush which resembles a blush brush.
So now I'm just adding some more glazes, adding some final touches to the painting just to really bring out the shadows and the highlights and just making things start to pop. At this point, my palette is getting so messy and cluttered, so stay tuned to the end for some great palette cleaning ASMR. As I'm coming to the completion of this painting, even though alkanded oil dries really fast, you still want to let it cure for a couple of weeks to maybe a couple of months before you varnish. Would you like to learn more about painting, drawing, or other art mediums? Reach out to me for a private lesson. I can help you unlock your potential to become a better artist with one-on-one -on -one coaching online or in person. You can email me for more information at jhillfineart at gmail.com or follow the link to my website in the description below.